So, Mrs. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista got a letter from her wealthy Aunt Sarah announcing that she planned to visit the McGee's this summer. Furthermore, the letter said she would not be alone, but would bring the Countess of Chumley with her. At the time, Mr. McGee stated as follows. A Countess? My gosh, read that again, Molly. A Countess? The Countess of Chumley. Countess? Yeah, it says your guest room will do for me, of course. But the Countess will require a house of her own. My gosh, she don't expect us to build a guest house just so she can It have a... says, uh, I am sending a rough sketch of the house I want. Build it and send me the bill. Love, Aunt Sarah. Now, that was a couple of weeks ago. Well, to make a long story short, the carpenters have finished, the house looks very handsome, and out here on their back lawn admiring it are Fibber McGee and Molly. Well, how do you like it, kiddo? Pretty snazzy shack, huh? Beautiful. I suppose Aunt Sarah will find something wrong with it. Oh, no, uh... McGee. I think it's exactly the kind of house Aunt Sarah had in mind. Yeah? She certainly ought to be tickled when she sees this. Good idea, kiddo. I'll hold her and you tickle her. (laughs) We'll get a smile out of that frosty old puss if it breaks every bone in her puss. Bless her rich old heart. Oh, now, McGee, don't start criticizing Aunt Sarah. She's a very cheerful person. Everybody says she has a lovely smile. Smile? Ah. Remember the time that photographer told her to give out with her biggest smile? And she says, this is my biggest smile? And the picture looked like she was getting ready to play a trumpet solo? (laughs) Why, she's the sorrow... Now, McGee, that's enough. Did you tell the carpenter just to mail her the bills like she said? Yeah, and you should have seen him when I mentioned the name of Aunt Sarah Driscoll. He turned around, faced the east, and fell on his knees. Just like that. Heard of her, had he? No, he stepped in a gopher hole. <laughs> hey, I wonder what color we ought to have it painted, Molly. What colors have we got? Well, I'll look out in the garage and set them all out for you to look at. I'll get out the red paint and the green paint and the white lead. I think maybe if you, get, if you got the lead out first, you... Uh... <laughs> oh, there's Oli from the Elks Club. Hello, Oli. Oh, hi, Oli. How do you like the new guest house we built, boy? Pretty snappy stack of sticks, huh? Yeah, sure. That's a very fancy house, McGee. Yeah. My missus tells me last week it looks like you was building something, but she couldn't see what it was without her glasses. Oh, I didn't know your wife wore glasses. Oh, yeah, right. sure. She got a slight case of nearsighted, my missus has. Uh-huh. Doctor says it's her opia. Uh, myopia, Oli. Oh, you nearsighted too, missus? <laughs> yeah. That's too bad. Maybe you just need glasses. No, no, I mean... Look, I test your eyes with the eye test, nurses. Now, how many fingers I hold up there? Two fingers? You need glasses. One finger is my thumb. (laughs) Hey, hey, hey. (laughs) Never mind the optical delusions, Ollie. We got to get in the house and phone Aunt Sarah. Tell her the guest house is finished. My cousin Jan, he also has house built last week, McGee. Only two days it takes. It was a pre-flabbergasted house. (laughs) Free what? Flabbergasted. When Jan finds out how much it costs, he was knocked over with a feather. <laughs> then he gets up and knocks over contractor with a two before. <laughs> that, I got to go home again. Me and the boys make garden today. Garden, eh? What you going to raise? Vegetables? Who, who knows what comes up? Last year, I sent ten cents to my congressman, and he sends me seeds. Yeah. We plant the seeds, and up comes weeds. McGee has the same trouble. Well, this year, I try a different. I thank this year I send my dime to the seed company and plant me a congressman so long. <laughs> well, come on, kiddo. Let's phone Aunt Sarah. Because... Uh oh. I'll get it. I'll get it. McGee's residence. McGee speaking. Who? City Hall. Building inspector. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we built a guest house on our property. Oh, we got to buy a building permit? Oh, okay, bud, okay, I'll buy a permit. I'll pay your dirty extortion money. But what, what? I can't buy a permit to build a building that's already built. Have to tear it down first. Oh. I'll tear down that city hall, that's what I'll tear down. Why, George, I'll have... Hello! 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 Huh, he hung up. Of all the dirty, rotten, and chiseling, they can't do this to me. Make me tear down a brand new house that... Can they, Molly? Heavenly days, I hope not. 
Oh, dear. How did you ever overlook that? Come in. Ah, oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Come in. Thank you, my dear. Hello, Beaverhead. What's new? <laughs> what's new is I'm going to go downtown and blow the lid off of that dirty political mess that calls itself the City Hall. That's what's new I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm sorry I asked, Lemon Brain. <laughs> I've got troubles of my own this morning. Well, you deserve them. I don't. What's the matter, Doctor? Yeah, what's your trouble, liver lover? <laughs> Medical Association make you take your advertising cards out of the city ambulances? <laughs> That'd cut your income down enough. Now to pipe think. down, flap lip. One of my interns got things a little fouled up this morning, Molly. I asked him to leave a book at the city hall for mail of trivia and then deliver a baby at the hospital for me. Well, that sounds simple enough, Doctor. Not for him. It was all right when he left the book at the hospital, but when he delivered a baby to mail a trivia, it got a little confusing. <laughs> well, that's all very interesting, Nerve Block. But we got to get going. We got to go downtown and buy us a building permit. Well, have a nice trip, kids. And while you're down there, McGee, don't forget to pick up your Social Security check. Social Security. Social Security? I'm not eligible for that stuff till I'm 65. By the time you get anything out of that building, Inspector, you'll be 65. <laughs> Come on, Go on. My goodness, McGee, it seems we're always having to come down here to the City Hall for something or other. Yeah, I know, and we shouldn't ought to have to come down here today at all. Building permit to build a building that's already built. That's a dirty outrage. It's sure lousy bureaucracy, that's what it is. And what's more, hey, I'm... McGee, what is bureaucracy? Well, bureau... Well, you know what a bureau is. <laughs> Certainly. Sure. Bureau starts out to be a good-looking, useful piece of furniture. But as time goes on, it gets filled up with a lot of useless junk and gets so big for its own drawers that nobody remembers what it was designed for in the first place. <laughs> By that time, it's so loaded down, you can't move it. That's a bureau. Yes, but you have... Bureaucracy is when your collar button rolls under it and you have to kneel down in front of it and beat your brains out trying to get it back. <laughs> Smart citizen lets it go, throws his shirt in after it, and wears a sweater. <laughs> Happy that he's still got his pants. <laughs> Thank you. Not at all, my dear. Always glad to explain any of these... Oh, hi, Mort. Hi, McGee. Mort who? Post them in the coroner's office. <laughs> kind of dumb, but it amused the coroner to have a guy named Mort post them doing the postmortems. <laughs> well, here's the building permit office. Hi, bud. You the building license clerk? Yes, sir, I am. Well, my name is McGee. Fibber McGee. I'm uh, sorry, sir, but we can't help you with that. Huh? I know how you must feel about it, but to change one's name legally, one must apply to the clerk. To no, be... no, no. Please, now. He doesn't want to change his name. He merely... Uh, pardon me, madam, but who are you? I am Mrs. Fibber McGee. Well, thank you. Your maiden name? Molly Driscoll. Well, you changed your name, didn't you? And why do you object to this gentleman wishing to change his name? <laughs> After all, two wrongs don't make a right. Oh, I cut it out, will you, bud? <laughs> Nobody wants to change anybody's name. Oh, I don't know about that. Huh? I know a girl named Mary Thompson. She wants to change her name to Crandall Dance. <laughs> From a Thompson to Crandall Dance? Whatever for? Because my name is Crandall Dance. She wants to marry me. <laughs> That's why when you make a statement, a blanket statement, mind you, like nobody wants to change their name... Now, wait a minute, Mr. Crandall Bunch. Dan. No, thank you. My feet hurt. <laughs> Look, are you the building license clerk or not? Now, that's a silly question. What's it say on the window? What does it say, Molly? Out to lunch. <laughs> How soon will you be back? <laughs> We won't be back. I mean, we ain't out for lunch. You are. I am? Well, I'm sorry you missed me. <laughs> I'm usually here at this time. <laughs> Frankly, bud, I doubt if you're ever completely here. <laughs> now, listen, I want to get a building permit. I see. Now, what type of structure do you plan to build? 
It's already built. Then you must tear it down. What? If the structure was built without a permit, you must tear it down, then get a permit, and build it again. You're not permitted to build without a permit. Dad, Braddard, I didn't know that, so now I want to get a permit. You can make it radioactive. <laughs> Dear, you mean retroactive. I mean he can turn his little rubber stamp back a few days and stamp me out a permit. Can't you, bud? Sir, are you suggesting that I, Farnsworth Crandall Dance, violate my oath of office by dishonestly and fraudulently predating a building permit, uh, thus being false to the friendship of Alderman Weingand, who got me this job because I was faithful and trustworthy, and his wife's nephew? <laughs> ah, Bilgewater. No Crandall then. <laughs> Because we forget to get a building permit. I didn't forget it. I didn't know I had to have one. Sir, my heart bleeds for you. Well, give us a permit and we'll buy you a transfusion. <laughs> Look, can you folks come back tomorrow? It's closing time. Closing time? It's only 3.15. Yes, madam, but I close early on Tuesday. I'm building a garage in my spare time. Oh, my goodness. I forgot to issue myself a permit. Uh -huh. Say, can you loan me a dollar, Mr. McGee, just till you tear your building down and come back for a permit? Why, you I... muddle-headed... <laughs> Maybe we can pick this up with Mayor Latrivia before we leave the city hall, McGee. He ain't in. But by George, I'm going to take this up with somebody. I pay my taxes. I vote regular. As a responsible citizen, I got a perfect right to say hello, Junior. Say what? Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Molly. Hiya, pal. What are you all steamed up about? He bumped his nose on a city regulation, and he's got a sore face, Mr. Yeah. Wilcox. Oh, you're doggone tootin' I have. Look, you got any influence with the building commissioners, Junie? They love me, pal. Matter of fact, at the last meeting of the building commissioners, they passed a resolution of appreciation. Appreciation of what? Me. The citation said, and I quote, To Harlow Wilcox, be it known that the building commissioners of Wistful Vista... Chiseling politician. Not a dead red one of them. ...have voted a unanimous resolution of appreciation in recognition of his untiring efforts in maintaining the cleanliness and beauty of our public buildings through the use of Johnson's water-repellent glow coat. I knew it. I just knew it. I knew that sooner or later... He... And whereas, said Johnson's water-repellent glow coat, by its extraordinary and amazing ability to eliminate streaks and dinginess even after repeated moppings and retain a sparkling sanitary protective wax coating on said floors of said public buildings, Said resolution is offered, said Harlow Wilcox, by said commissioners, on said... Oh, drug... said, 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 said. <laughs> Look, Waxy. Yes, pal. What we want to know, Mr. Wilcox, is have you any influence with said building commissioners concerning said problem about said permit? No. But I think I can help you. Great, great. I knew you'd come through, Junior. I knew you were the kind of a ship that wouldn't desert a sinking rat. <laughs> What are you going to do? I'm coming out this very evening and glow coat the floors of that building. Yeah. When the commissioners see how beautiful it is, they won't have the heart to make you tear it down. I'll be right out after dinner. Now, don't try to thank me. Glad to do it. Glad to do it. Oh, what a wonderful idea. How can we ever repay him for a thing like that, dearie? I don't know. Unless we send him some poison chocolates. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess i got to handle this matter myself. You know the old saying, kiddo, if you want a thing well done, don't start anything that looks too tough. <laughs> That's why I always Wait a minute, say... McGee. Huh? Uh, maybe the old-timer has a suggestion. Who? You who, Mr. Old-timer? Oh, hi, old-timer. Hello there, kids. What's the matter with you, Johnny? Uh... Look as sour as a vinegar and milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> Have you any influence with the city building commissioners, Mr. Oldtimer? Nope. They hate my internal arrangements, don't they? <laughs> and why? Simply because when they put up the new museum, I read a letter to the Gazette saying it looked like a marble piggy bank that would fall down if a streetcar went past it too fast. <laughs> and, while well, I didn't think there was any graph connected with it, I thought that $600,000 for them two brass lions out in front was kind of expensive. <laughs> 
Well, then I guess there's no use taking this thing up with you. Where have you been lately? Motoring trip, Johnny. Oh. Out in New Mexico. Heard them and seen all them flying saucers. Heavenly days. Did you see any? Daughter, I've been keeping my trap shut about this for fear folks would think I was kind of dull in the skull. <laughs> Besides, military authorities, for some reason, don't want nobody to believe nothing. The Pentagon building has established a regular poo-poo department for that stuff. <laughs> yeah, but what did you see? Well, sir, Johnny, I was driving along near Almogorda one day when I happened to look up into the sky, see? And there it was. Yeah? A peculiar-shaped thing sailing along about a thousand foot long and a mile wide with holes in the edges and dangerous looking. My goodness. I retched back into the back seat for my 30-30. took a couple of pot shots at it, but it was too far away, I guess. Gee. Well, sir, finally disappeared to the south. Sure had me scared till I figured out what it was. What was it? A cloud. <laughs> Doggone it, why don't Latrivia return my call, Molly? Hand me the phone, I'll try him again. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Mayor Latrivia's office and make it snap my garter if it ain't Mert. <laughs> Who's Mert? Mert? My gosh, you remember Mert, Molly. The phone operator that's always good for a gag if we can think of it. <laughs> well, how's every little thing, Mert? <laughs> it is, eh? What say, Mert? Your brother, the preacher. Having trouble with his sister, eh? Well, why don't he go see the dentist? Dentist? Why should he see a dentist about his sister? Has to get the list took out of his new dentures. <laughs> He's all right with a dear brethren, but he can't say cistern. <laughs> What's that, Mert? Oh, okay, Mert. Doesn't the mayor answer? No, he's probably on the way over here now because I left word for him. Come in. Who are you hollering at? Nobody rang the bell. Sure they did. <laughs> you heard me. Come in. My goodness, this is Mayor the Honor. Come in, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Molly. Hello, McGee. Uh, I had a message that you wanted to see me about something urgent. What is it? That's a good question, Latrivia, because I'm going to tell you. It's very cooperative, dear. Well, I got a question for you, Latrivia. What kind of a city where an honest citizen that he goes to all the trouble and expense of building a guest house in his backyard for a countess with his aunt's perfectly good money and can't get a permit for it on account of the claim I got to tear it down first? Are you running, boy? I imagine that's a good question. If anybody could understand it. Molly, would you care to translate that for me? Well, Mr. Mayor, we built a guest house in our backyard for Aunt Sarah. She's bringing the countess... In, of... your, in your backyard? Yeah. I thought McGee had just planted a garden back there to experiment with growing seaweed on land and sprinkling it with salt water. <laughs> what became of that project? Well, that didn't succeed. <laughs> you see, I figured that weeds are so full of seed that seaweed seed, being fuller of weed seeds than plain weeds, ought to succeed where plain weed seed would recede. Indeed. <laughs> Proceed. With all speed. Well, sir, we divided the yard up between weeds and seaweeds, and not being by the seaside, we had to decide which side we'd seed with weed seeds and which side we'd seed with seaweed seeds. See? Side? <laughs> so... We decided to sow the south side with seaweed seeds, and we thought the west side was the best side to reseed with weed seed. Because the best weed seed we'd seen was the seaweed seed, so between sowing and seeding and seeing the weed seeds recede in front of the seaweed, we tore the whole thing up and planted tulips. <laughs> I'd like to say, McGee, that that's a very interesting story. Oh, well, thanks, Latrell. But it isn't. Uh. Now, what's this urgent problem of yours? Well, here's the story, Mr. Aunt Earl of Trivia. We got a letter from Aunt Sarah that she's coming to visit us, and she's bringing a countess with her. And she asked us to build a guest house in the backyard. We sent the plans, and she's paying for it, and we had it built. Very generous of you. Yeah, but we forgot to get a building permit for it. And now they say we'll have to tear it down and start all over. Isn't that pretty ridiculous, Mr. Mayor? Yes, it is, Molly, but it's the law. I'm afraid I can't go over the building inspector's head. Yes. Yes, I can, too. I'm going over his head. Well, a trivia. Going over his head, eh? Yes, he's on the third floor of City Hall. I'm going up to the fourth floor and lie down a little while. So long, boy. Well, I guess 
Thanks. That's it, kiddo. I'm beat. It's a dirty, rotten break, but you can't fight City Hall. Oh, well, I'm just sick about this, McGee. That lovely little house. Yeah, That's it ain't going to do our names in Aunt Sarah's will any good when I tell her how I fouled up her summer, too, either. She'll bell her like a scalded moose. Maybe she and the Countess will come anyhow. Call her up and explain to her. I might as well. Hand me the long-distance telephone. Use this one here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Aunt Sarah, long distance. Yeah. Hello, Aunt Sarah. <laughs> this is your favorite nephew. Shall I tell you what happened? Fibber. Just explain to her, dearie. Aunt Sarah, we built that house you wanted, and it looks swell. Yeah, but there's only one thing, Aunt Sarah. I forgot to get a building permit, and we got to tear it down. Yeah, but don't worry. The Countess is welcome to come with you, Aunt Sarah. Yeah, we can give her a room in the house, but she'll have to share your bathroom. I hope she isn't angry. She won't mind, huh? How's that, Aunt Sarah? The Countess is a great... Great what? Oh. Oh. Well, goodbye, Aunt Sarah. The Countess is a great what, McGee? A great sport? She's a great dame. <laughs> Yeah, she won't need a bathroom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... If you had the power to reach across the country, lift a crippled child out of a bed or a wheelchair, and start him running across the playground, how long would you hesitate? You wouldn't hesitate. And you do have that power through the National Society for Crippled Children and Adults, which is dedicated to serve the needs of the crippled. So send a generous contribution to Easter Seals, Box 5050, Chicago, Illinois. 5050 is a great old American expression. So remember, Easter Seals, Box 5050, Chicago, Illinois. Good night. Good night, all. Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford County.